expressing some concern in regards for his safety or whereabouts. New fears have been uh, raised up about uh, Assange. Has he been killed? Well, this is uh, very concerning indeed, in my opinion. Now, there's a lot of information coming in in WikiLeaks recently in regards to the UFO phenomenon. And uh, this is pretty devastating. I want to get people's opinions tonight, this special Monday night radio show. Do you think uh, the U.S. government and the Ecuadorian government have basically uh, said, hey, look, we don't like this stuff coming out right before the election? Because people are getting kind of riled up about this. Some people are saying that there might be an invasion, an alien invasion on Election Day, a possible false flag. Well, these are big statements. These are big statements. But, wow, where is Julian Assange? This is a big question that hopefully we get to find out very soon. Uh, we hope he's okay. You know, he does. He he's just doing what Third Phase of Moon does in its own way. It's just filtering out the information that it comes in. Thousands of people keep demanding to see Assange proof of life. Let's get the proof of life. Let's get the proof of life and see what's going down. They said that, uh, some people said that they heard that he was banned from using the internet. Well, yeah, that that doesn't surprise me, but that's what WikiLeaks is all about. So we'll see if anything comes around via Julian Assange. But tonight, we're going to be taking calls from around the world in regards to the UFO phenomenon that hopefully they can cut it off because that's what we want to do. We want to get the word out. So the number to call in, again, is 347-934-0378. Let's bring in the callers right now. Air code 415, welcome to the show. You're live, third phase of it. What's up, Blake? How you doing, man? Hey, pretty good, pretty good. What do you think? Do you think uh, Julian is uh, safe? Do you think they're trying to cut man, off you know, the information coming like- in? When it comes to stuff like this, man, I honestly don't know. I can't call it. I just, you know, I got hope for the best. If he's all right, hopefully he's all right. We'll see. You know what I mean? But um, I'm the one that left you that message last night on your last video. Uh, I seen a couple. I seen something in San Francisco late night uh, over the downtown area. It was crazy. Um, uh, so I'm an Uber driver in San Francisco. I drive for Uber and Lyft, and I was taking someone to Oakland. On my way back into the city, I saw three, I mean, in a triangle form, you know, one on top, two on bottom, really bright lights. But the whiteness or the the color of the white, the, the light was like, obviously it stood out for me to catch a glimpse and just trip off of it. It was just literally sitting there. So what I did was, not even paying attention, I busted a uh, right, got off of the first exit. wasn't paying attention. I was just trying to get to the light. Um, I jumped out my car and realized I was in the projects in Oakland. So I didn't really want to pull out my phone and start pointing it up around people. You know, you don't do that if you don't want to get in trouble. So I jumped back in my car and uh, headed towards the bridge. And then I parked on the side before I got on the bridge. And I don't have a good phone. To, I tried taking a video. It doesn't look – it could be anything. It's really garbagey. It, it doesn't look good. Uh, I took a couple pictures. Again, doesn't look good. But uh, it was just sitting there, midair. It was kind of moving from left to right slowly. It wasn't a Chinese lantern because it stayed in formation. The three dots, uh, there was about two or three helicopters. Because uh, San Francisco, Oakland, there's two airports literally across the bay from each other. I mean, like we have – there's rules where you can't fly drones in that area. You, 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 there, there's a lot of airspace and a small amount of space, basically, if that makes any sense. So I don't know where I, I, I realized it was two or three. At first I thought there was three, but then when I, you know, pulled over and saw there was only two and they kept circling and circling the thing. And, uh, before you know it, it just zoomed off quick, boom, gone. Like it was gone and they kept circling and circling for a good, I mean, I went back to work and I kept looking up and anytime I had a clear view, I kept looking. They were around for another hour. And uh, after that, it was just pretty much over with. But then the funny thing was I, right away, I had left you a, I, on one of your last one of your videos. I said, hey, Blake, I just seen something, blah, blah, blah. And then two hours later, 
you put that one, uh, the one video of the Netherlands up, and in that video, someone in Sacramento seen damn near the same thing I seen um, the same night, or I don't know if he recorded it the same night or not. That's what I was trying to ask you, but uh, the, the same night I emailed you on your thing on YouTube, two hours later, you put up the Netherlands video, and then there was a Sacramento, uh, someone seen something in Sacramento, and I was wondering if maybe those two were connected together or what. But, uh, it yeah, was, it you know, was, that's, a, that's a good question, because uh, I think it was captured the same day. I'll reference that, the Netherlands video. If anybody could pull that up, our video last night, and see if that were, was the case. Because this is what's interesting to me, though, is that you're in a big city. You're thinking that people are going to see this stuff. And there's going to be thousands of UFO videos on the internet of this event. And it's surprising to me in a lot of cases that it really, it doesn't turn out to be that way. It seems like sometimes that they're just basically, nobody's looking up in the skies and it's a good thing. Some people are including yourself, sir. Again, when, when again, was this taken? And uh, let me ask you this. Was it, I don't know if I heard you, was it in the daytime or nighttime? And where were you? The nighttime. It, it was the nighttime. It was around. Um, I mean, I don't even remember. It, it had to be after eleven, twelve, one o'clock at night in the, or, you know, in the morning. It had to be. And um, you don't think there were I military? Left you, I left you. A me- I left you a message. What's that? I'm sorry. You don't think there were military choppers of any kind? What makes you say that it wasn't one of ours? I. Oh no! What, the thing that I saw. Yeah, yeah. Oh, I honestly c- couldn't tell you. I, I'm, um, to me, honestly, it was unidentified. But the way it took off and the way that it was just literally sitting there, playing, it literally looked like it was just sitting there. I'm gonna be honest with you. At first, when I was, there's a, there's a children's hospital in Oakland, and it's all it's all anyone that knows the Bay Area. There's a BART state and on the freeway. Uh, it's 980, I believe. There's a BART, the BART station, which is like the train station, in the middle of the freeway. When you when you see the BART station to the right, there's a children's hospital. And f- behind the children's hospital is like a clear shot all the way down towards that town. It's a nice, perfect picture of the city. So at first, I was like, oh, I thought it was the pointy building. And I thought, because usually like when the Giants or the Niners or the Warriors win or they're playing, the, the city changes the lights on top of their buildings from orange to blue, yellow, red or whatever. So at first I seen it and I didn't think nothing of it, but then I, like I said, the color of the lights were seriously different. They were really vivid, really bright. There wasn't like, it wasn't like, there was no like beam to it. It was just like a super bright light. So at first I really did think it was the pointy building, but then when I realized it wasn't, I could see, I, I like, I, when I pulled over downtown in the projects of Oakland, I, I, I looked up and I could see that it was, I, I want to say waving left to right left to right and then that's when I rec- realized uh, I was in the wrong area and uh, I seen the helicopters and then so I just kind of like tried to proceed to find it or whatever but honestly it could have been I don't know I mean I- I'm not saying that I saw a green person you know what I mean I seen something it was weird and the way it took off I don't think we have anything I don't know that we have anything that takes off from a dead stop to a f- that quick and just disappear where I couldn't even find it at all anymore Wow, absolutely, absolutely sounds unexplainable to me. Sounds like, wow, if you can't explain it yourself, and you, you're a grown man, you know what you're seeing, and you've seen a lot of uh, air traffic over there. It's a big city, and you see something strange. It possibly is strange. Uh, thank you so much for calling in. Appreciate that. Now, there's so many callers in tonight, and it is our Monday night radio show. We don't do this very often, but... People want to share their story, so let's bring them in. Let's bring them in. Uh, we're bringing them in, and hopefully we could bring them all in tonight. 706, you're live, third phase of the moon. Welcome to the show. Hi. Hey, how's it going? It's going good. Um, it's it's Sophia. How are you? Hey, doing good tonight. I'm, I'm, we're just kind of concerned about Julian Assange. He's been uh, basically declared missing. We haven't heard from him. He has basically no internet access, and the people at WikiLeaks are a little concerned about his uh, safety. And there was a statement that they put out on recently on their 
web page, but it's really still not giving any confirmation of his safety or anything. It's kind of a uh, kind of weird. We want proof of life. Uh, that's my concern this Monday night. What do you think? Is do you think uh, he's I kind think, of riled up? I think he's gone cutters? under the. I think that he's worried about his own life, and I think he's gone under uh, trying to find a safe place to be. Um, he's not stupid. I wouldn't. I wouldn't put anything past him. And yeah, he's probably gone underground and is trying to find a good place to go. Um, when they cut off your internet access, that's pretty serious stuff. And if you're thinking straight, you, you know what's next. The government coming after you is next. So, yeah, I think he went under. And uh, well, to get him to talk shoot. about it, it's going to be a tough thing. Yeah, it's it's actually definitely, I'm sure what you just said is 100% accurate. I, I imagine he is uh, going underground right now because things are getting quite intense in the, with this election year. And everything else coming up within, what, another 18 days now, it's going to be going down. It's going to go down real right. quick. I think 14 days, it's happening fast. It's just right around the corner. And there's so many right. leaks coming up. And I got a feeling there's going to be some more coming out. But, wow, they're trying to shut down some information. I got a feeling some of it has to do with, uh, you know, our friends up there, the extraterrestrials. Um, yeah, I would agree with you. Um, I think the uh, mounting... Uh, sightings that are going on lately have a lot to do with what's going on uh, worldwide, actually, with governments and uh, power struggles. And um, I think that uh, when they're talking about an event coming, I think that's it's getting closer and closer and closer. I mean, rapidly closer, like maybe even before Christmas. We'll have to wait and see. Absolutely. And then some people say this false uh, flag invasion. They've been talking about that for years. But wow, uh, um, right the day of the election. Now, that makes a little sense to me. But OK, let's let's get into uh, some of UFO sightings. That's why you called in tonight. You got something you want to share with us? Uh, well, yeah, I've, I've had so many. I was thinking about it for a while, which ones I would like to talk about and some of them are just um, so weird that it's really hard for me to even retell them to myself. Okay, hold um, on. Let's go with the weirdest, okay. the weirdest one. We like because nothing's weird here. Let me tell you, it's all relevant. People have experienced all this before, so you're, it's not you're not by yourself. So I want to hear the weirdest encounter, uh, extraterrestrial UFO encounter. And again, what was your name? Sophia. All right, Sophia. Appreciate it. Thanks for calling in tonight. Can you can you share your uh, most outstanding experience in regards to this phenomenon? That's what the people really want to hear. So I appreciate it. Thank you. You're welcome. Um, uh, one summer, I started dreaming every night that um, uh, I, a saucer was coming, and um, I was uh, in an old neighborhood that I used to live in, and um, it would uh, pick me up. You know, I mean, it would, like, take me up in the light and into the saucer. And it it was never a bad dream, and it wasn't a afraid dream, things like that. And uh, I started thinking about it for a long time, and I thought, my God, I think that I, this has actually been happening. And, and for some reason, I'm just remembering it like it's a dream. And um, uh, I deliberately tried to, like, go them and to just let me have one clear memory. Um, cause most of the time I just black out and, and, uh, just know that it's happened to me, but you know, it, it's, it's too dreamlike even that way. And, uh, I, uh, spent about a, uh, three or four days just trying to meditate and try to make it understood, you know, put it in my brain to make, put it across to him. Just one, you know, just give me one, you know, it's like, I don't want to keep going through my life thinking I've lost my mind. And uh, sure enough, um, one night in the middle of the night, I woke up and uh, I saw um, the weirdest thing I've ever seen in my life. I saw a saucer come halfway through my room. My room is on the end of the house. 
And um, I was stupefied. I mean, it was like it just sort of materialized through the house. And um, it wasn't that big. It, um, I call the size of it a two-seater, if that makes any sense. Being suddenly was in the room with me. And um, trying to communicate with me, um, I, I was so stupefied, I didn't get the message right away. And uh, pretty much they just said, okay, here you go. Now you got proof. And um, stayed a few more seconds with me and let me get a good look. And then he went back and it was gone. It it left the same way it came in. And it dematerialized back through the wall. And I jumped up and I ran to my window and I was looking out and I saw it going up and then take off. I mean, 4,000 miles an hour. It, you know, boom, it was gone. And um, I've, I've, that was that happened to me about two years ago. And uh, since then, I keep having um, them show up, you know, in the middle of the night. It's usually around 3, 3.30 in the morning, and um, they're doing whatever it is they do. And I, but I don't get the clear. It's still like a dream-like state. The weirdest thing that ever happened to me. I mean, I, I, I sometimes think if I try hard enough again, I'd probably get them to show up again. Um, I can't photograph them. I don't know why it is. I need somebody to tell me what kind of camera to use, because every time I use my camera, my phone camera, or I have a digital camera, I cannot get clear pictures of anything. It's like they, there's something weird about. Their presence it messes with my camera. That's the weirdest one. You know that is incredibly uh, amazing because it sounds like you had a flying saucer, a two seater. Probably, I would say it sounds like to me maybe about fourteen to twenty feet in diameter. A flying saucer materialized in your room, and an alien came out of it and communicated with you to show proof that they existed. Right, but I'm not nuts. I know. It blew me out of the water. I mean, I, I didn't know. It, it's like I froze at first. I mean, I literally froze. I couldn't. It scared. Well, I wasn't scared. I mean, I asked for it. But it was like a shock that it was actually happening. You know, you slow things down in your head. It's like your brain starts ticking it off second for second for second. And um, I got the best look at them I've ever gotten in my whole life. I mean, there's no doubt. I mean, I could see um, facial features, creases, whatever. It was all there. And um, I was fascinated uh, with their hands. Um, They don't have five fingers at all. It's like three fingers and a thumb. And uh, they're longer than our hands, and they look delicate, you know, like I could break it if I wanted to. And um, they're... um, very, very um, thin, I guess is the best way to put that. It's like a small child thin. And um, their eyes are dark as all get out, but they do have, if you get light on their eye, you can see that they do have an iris and that it does change shape. And um, they can blink, which that blew me out of the water. I didn't I ever see that before. I never got that detail when I got that close. And um, it that floored me. I mean, they blink. They really do. And um, it's not like it's they don't have as thick an eyelid as we do. It's very thin. But, yeah, they do blink and um, exactly move like iris do. They swivel. I does that make sense? In other words, they can move them back and forth, but it's not as they don't have the same movement that we do, you know. We can roll our eyes. I don't think they can do that at all. And um, No, really, really good detail. That's what we like, the information. There's so many people that have had experiences, it sounds like, uh, with the Ellen Gray that you just uh, had. And to get this kind of detail really makes a, makes a big deal. It's important. It's important to share this. What I want to ask you, too, is – well, besides proving a point that they exist, was there any kind of message they they wanted to relate to you? I keep getting um, – basically the feeling that I'm getting is um, – um, how do I put this? We're in a lot of trouble, 
and it's almost like they're trying to educate some of us to uh, help stop it or at least be ready for something that's coming. That's what I keep getting. I need to be prepared. And um, we're um, there. There's there's more than one kind of race of aliens, you know. And um, some of them are very cooperative with each other. That's what I get from them. And then some of them you have to worry about and be wary of, you know, and outright try to stay away from. And um, they're all over the place. That's the other thing I get. They're literally everywhere. We just don't realize it. And um, some of them are underground. Some of them are on, you know, um, on a planetary body nearby. Um, I keep hearing a lot about there's a moon base or whatever. I'm pretty sure that's probably true. Um, but it, it just keeps, I keep getting the, there's an event. That's the main word that keeps popping in my head. Something is about to happen big time. And we're not supposed to be afraid. That's the other big thing I keep getting is we need to stay calm. And I guess nice, the whole nice. human race yes. would go crazy, you know. But that's yeah, what yeah, I get so you, Wow, that's a, that's really a that's com- comforting because you know it's not all about a doom and gloom. It's the end of the world. It's more about get ready. Something's going to happen. It's going to be big, but it's going to be something that we don't have to worry about. It's more like yeah, look forward to something that's going to be uh, the biggest thing for humanity as we know it. Hey, thank you, Sophia, for sharing your incredible experience. That's that's what it's all about right here at Third Phase of the Moon. Remember uh, the number to call in, 347-934-0378. We have a lot of callers lined up, so stay tuned. We'll be right back. Blake Cousins, Third Phase of Moon special, Monday Night Radio. Assange, come on, man. If you're out there, let everybody know. Proof of life. Proof of life. That's what it's all about. We need to know if you're safe. It's all good because people understand things are things are, are happening. And with the information you're putting out, I can imagine you're, you're afraid. 
but man, you got to get that UFO evidence out there. You got to get that evidence regarding the extraterrestrials. You started, you started, but I got a feeling you got a lot more up your sleeve. So Julian, pull it off, pull it off. Let's uh, break it open, break it open now. Be safe, Julian. Okay, let's let's bring them in. Let's bring them in. The callers. Seven seven three. You're live. Third phase moon. How you doing tonight? Hey, I'm doing good. I mean, I didn't think I was going to be picked so quickly, but, um, you know, I'm going back to Sophia. Sophia had a point, you know what I'm saying? She had an experience that, um, I would say I've had in the past myself, but, you know, we keep on looking at this thing, I think, in the, in the, in the, at the wrong angle, because, like, um, these may be interdimensional beings, you know what I'm saying? I mean, like, I mean, reference, uh, let's say the Bible. Jesus Christ walked through walls. He walked on water. You know what I'm saying? He did things that no human being ever did. You know, that, that today. You know, and if you reference the Bible, you know, they said that uh, um, there, there was a third of angels or something like that that was cast down to the earth. You know what I'm saying? So if that was true, if those angels that were cast down to the earth were true, those are the beings that our governments are dealing with. That's giving them the knowledge to give them this, um, you know, this, 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 this technology that we have never experienced. Okay? Our governments yeah, you know, that makes know sense. about that makes this. Sense a little bit. Oh, yeah, you know, the, there is the theory, the interdimensional theory of these beings that they could be angelic in their own way, that it is has something to do with divineness. And that is a very big possibility in regards to a lot of these sightings, for sure. But I think we have to separate a little bit of uh, between what is extraterrestrial and what is some of these interdimensional beings, because I, I'm a full believer in interdimensional beings and you know, time travelers from different times and space. And and that makes sense to me. It definitely makes a lot of sense. And I'm sure like if WikiLeaks could w- leak some of that stuff out about some of the divineness, if if they have some evidence that the Vatican's not sharing with us, because apparently the Pope knows that ETs exist, it, whether they be ET or extraterrestrial. My whole thing is, is that there's probably both. And uh, hopefully that comes out and that's, that's my opinion on that. Okay. I think that these beings, whoever they are, have contacted the heads of our government. And this is why we're making so much progress, you know, technologically. You know what I'm saying? Because they're divulging this knowledge to them. You know? I mean, like, what other, you know, what other possible explanation can you have? You know, I mean, we've jumped from... Uh, the horse and buggy, you know what I'm saying, to go into the moon in a matter of, you know, less than, what, what, 100 years. And now we're talking about going to Mars. Intervention. Yeah, intervention in oh. the Roswell crash, reverse-engineered alien technology. or Exactly. What do you think? I think they're giving them this knowledge, you know, um, you know, in exchange for something else. Is it exchange for... You know, um, you know, human cells. I don't know. You know, I mean, they had, they had, I believe that our governments of this world have made a bargain with them, you know, uh, to so they can get what they want, so the 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 governments can get what they want. You know, I mean, it's 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 a deal going on. This is why there's such a big cover up. This is why they don't want you to uh, to know. That there's, you know, these these flying saucers or whatever it is, or anything going on the moon or whatever. You know, they're blinking this stuff out because they have made a deal with these beings, you know, so we won't find out about them so soon. And it's just it's just my thoughts. Wow, you know, thanks for sharing. And you know, I think he you hit the nail on the head there because there's so much a. Uh, information that would shock the world and some people they're just kind of 
they love the technology out there. They like it the way it is, and they, people don't look up in the sky. They're playing their video games and playing with their Pokemon or what have you, whatever the new fad is. But they really don't want to know what the big question is. And what the big question is, life. Why are we here? What made us? What is our purpose? And, man, there's a lot of uh, questions out there. And it sure is interesting that there is this mystery out there that needs to be solved. And I think Julian Assange is on the cutting edge of that as well as third phase moon, dealing with the people, dealing with the public. We got F1 uh, calling in tonight. We're going to get to him momentarily, but some people have been holding on for quite a while. This from the beginning of the show, let's see if we could bring in more callers. Eric code three zero nine. You're live third phase moon. Welcome to the show. Hey, how's it going? Thanks for having me. Hey, thanks for waiting, sir. Thanks for waiting. And, uh, before we get to uh, any kind of subject matter in regards to your uh, call in tonight, I just wanted to get your opinion. What do you think? Is Julian Assange uh, going underground because of, uh, you know, he's afraid for his life right now? Obviously, he's afraid all the time, but why is he not showing proof of life? What's your opinion? Yeah, I mean, I hope that's the case. I hope, I hope he's safe. Um, but, you know, obviously, it's, it could be bad news, and I, I hope I hope he is safe because we need people like that. We need people to bring the truth. Um, I think that's that's all any of us in this world really want is truth, and we're we're not getting it. We're we're not getting it from our government, and um, it's time. And I think that's I, we're we're in the you know where you, whatever you want to call it, the last days. I prefer to call it new beginning because the theories that are out there about all this terrible stuff that has to happen, that, that that's not truth either. The truth is that um, we, we're going to get to live in paradise. Um, and I'll, I'll, I'll take you back off the, la- the last caller because I really liked what he had to say because um, I think he was on the right track where, I mean, we are all one in this world. And there are UFOs. Do we have any, you know, clear-cut explanations of what exactly they are? I've seen them myself. I've had crazy experiences. Um, but the the thing is, no one has come out. No one has been able to come out and tell us exactly what what they are. Which ones are good? Which ones are bad? Um, it's just why why is that? And I think the reason being is. I think it, it puts a little bit on us to have some faith to, you know, faith to, you know, to kind of give us the free will to, to believe maybe some of the things that people have tried to tell us our whole lives, like things from the Bible that, you know, I believe are true. Um, but also to, um, to, to understand that again, we are all one. We are all one, one in this world. Um, we're all created. We're all the same. And the fact that we were all created by a higher power, by a being. And Jesus said himself, anyone who believes in him is one. We're all one body, and he's the head. He's the captain. He's the king. And um, I think we're on the cusp of him being revealed to the world. And um, and, and the ultimate revelation to me is that we are all Jesus. We are all one with him. We are all connected and we get to share and that we are all co-heirs. We're not slaves. We're, we're his brothers. We're his friends. We're his heirs. Heirs mean we get to share in his glory, share in his kingdom because of what he did on the cross 2,000 years ago. He, he died for all of us, for everyone in the world, whether we know it or not or believe it or not, and he came back to life. So that we can share in his glory. It's, it's love, man. It's all about peace and love and harmony and oneness. Well, wow. you know that. Uh, thank you so much for that, Colin. And it just makes it makes you think about big, big, big things. And the Big Bang comes to mind when what and how this universe was created. Who created it? Why was it an accident? Was it something? Uh, Something designed? Well, that's questions that we still want answers for, and religion and God 
and Jesus have a lot to do with that. That's for sure. So that's really neat. My big question is, are there big bangs going on all the time, every, wherever in the universe besides in, in, in an infinite, in, in, infinity of space? It just you could never contemplate a wall. There's no wall. Okay, what's behind this? How far can we go? It's just you can't find the end. So there could be multiple big bangs going on, trillions all the time, and there are so many universes out there. It's just unimaginable uh, to comprehend what life and uh, reality is all about. So are we living in a matrix? Who knows? Maybe Julian Assange has some uh, insight on that. But there is some kind of uh, power out there that binds us all together for sure. All right. So we got some uh, callers in. I thank that caller for uh, calling in. People have been uh, waiting for a while. We're doing this Monday night radio show. We're going to see what happens. Air code 708. You're live. Third phase of minute. Hey, Blake. How you doing? Um, wow. I just want to say that I'm really proud of everyone for talking about God. Uh, I think we really need to need to bring God back into America. That's pretty cool. And um, yeah, it's a big subject matter, no doubt about it. You know, third phase of moon. We we're not a religious kind of. Uh, we don't talk religious too much about things because we're strictly about trying to find out the truth about alien cover up and UFOs. But there is a sure. big question out there, and you know, God has something to do with something. Whoever God is, and whatever religion you believe in, there is something out there that created this uh, spark. And is this spark happening all the time? It's a big question. It's, it's a mystery. Yeah, I agree. Uh, about Julian Assange, I heard he's okay. Um, you know, I don't know if that's true. I found uh, a channel on YouTube called William Mount. He talks about it. And uh, he states that the WikiLeaks director... Gavin McFadden, he was found dead a couple of days ago. I found found that to be interesting. Yeah, and, we heard um, we heard some uh, yeah. chatter that yeah he possibly have been uh, he's he's not around anymore and he's been uh, taken out. What kind of a uh, detail did you hear about this? This is all we haven't confirmed any of this, but it is very strange that there has not been any proof of life. What did you hear? They were saying that he's okay. Um, he wasn't raided, but they did shut down his internet somehow. But they said that Gavin McFadden uh, passed away due to an illness, but they wouldn't say why. I guess he's the director of WikiLeaks. Uh, I'm really familiar with all that. And um, I just wanted to say that, to, you know, I wasn't really a believer in UFOs and aliens. Uh, I I, I was interested, but tonight I uh, I found something in the skies. You know, maybe they were helicopters hovering for quite a while, but I, I was able to capture it with my phone, and I uploaded it to my YouTube channel, and uh, yeah, it's pretty interesting. Um, maybe they're helicopters, but they were completely silent. I didn't hear any, you know, chopper blades or motors or anything like that, and they just stood completely still, and they, they moved a little bit, but uh, yeah, pretty interesting, man. Love your channel. Hey, man, I'd like to see that video. You know, there's a lot of uh, technology out there possibly that they are using it in things that would make a lot of noise, you would think, like jets and helicopters. But they're not in a, using it in a practical matter. They're actually using technology that should be shared with us right now. But they're uh, disguising it in these things. And it sounds like you may have captured some of this. Are there, what's their, your YouTube channel? We can take a look at that. Yeah, the YouTube channel is Artist Chicago. So I just uploaded that a couple hours ago. It's not, you know, it's blurry at first. It doesn't like to capture uh, anything at night, but then it, it clears up a little bit. It's only a five-minute video, but um, that's my first encounter. Pretty cool, man. Hey, man, if we use it, would you uh, mind us uh, sharing your video to Third Phase of Moon? Yeah, if you think it's uh, if it's good, go ahead problem well uh if you guys heard that uh that youtube link please pull up that link for me i'd like to check that out uh, later tonight and uh you know that is 
that's amazing because you're calling in, you're sharing UFO videos, you got opinions, and that that's that's what it's all about talking to people. We're we're trying to get them all in tonight, but man, appreciate you calling, sir. No problem. Love your channel, man. Keep it up. You're doing a great job. Hey, we try our best. We try, and it, it's uh, it's fun, and it's amazing, and it's a wild ride. But man, things uh, sometimes it's it's kind of it's scary sometimes that uh, some of these people are going missing, or they end up puking weird vomit, and they're dying. And director of WikiLeaks has possibly been uh, killed murdered and Julian Assange is going down and it's all people that are just trying to get information out. All right. All right. We've got a few minutes left. I, I want to bring in F1. He's here with us. Welcome to the show, guys. Hey, how are you? How you doing? Are you coming hey. a little? Yeah. How you doing? You're coming a little muffled, but I wanted to ask you, F1, what do you think about uh, what we just heard tonight? The director of WikiLeaks, has possibly been, you know, taken out. And then we have Julian Assange going MIA, missing in action, and there's no proof of life. And there was so much activity recently, and then all of a sudden, it's gone basically uh, down, shut down. It's gone blackout. Sounds typical, like if they went to the director because he knew he was the one person for sure that they – would guarantee that he had connections and conversations with Hassan, so he didn't give them up, and they did what they always do. That's pretty basic. Uh, other things, real he's quick. He's pretty so yeah, effective, multiple... though. He, he's, he's very effective at getting the information out just recently. What, what, made you, what made you think that they – why did they wait until now until, instead of him doing all these other leaks just recently? Because they were trying to wait to listen to a trail to find us on. When they didn't find it and gave them time, that's it. Game over. So you're basically saying that uh, Julian b made a major mistake by once he released these files, there was a trace. And uh, because there's right. a lot of ways to get out the information, but once you get up on the internet and you're sharing all this stuff, it's pretty easy to trace what's going on. Very easy. And you don't even need to be on the air. Once they find your location, they triangulate and you're done. So you got to disappear. Well, we'll see what's going uh, with, along with this election. It's coming up here pretty shortly, but all i got to say is that... Got a uh, the things UFO, like, the, i got to share go with ahead. you, though. As far as, yeah, I think we are in like a giant snow globe. That's why we have gravity. That's why we don't see the dark side of the moon, because that's kind of revealing one of the control areas. When people disappear and planes disappear, I think they're taken to another place just like Earth to do more research and give them a different atmosphere to see how, in different conditions, to see how they react under these conditions. Another thing, and please I have a little minute on this one, about all the clown things that are going on, I think very seriously, because I tried to find out why it's even been this publicized. So I've done a lot of research on it recently. And I find that, like, the police in different areas are monitoring how the reaction is, but yet for them to even be responding to it means that it's some part of the matrix that they're working within. And what I think is this. I think they're trying to look at the response of people to a foreign or a weird situation to see how they react. Did they get scared? Did they attack it? How do they react to this? Because not only were they monitoring it, um, I've heard comments like, yeah, we would never let it get out of hand. Like they had the whole thing controlled to begin with um there's some pretty I, I just think that they're using it as a test scenario because we're getting real close to putting things in in public and they're trying to use that as a model 
of reaction of most people when put in a scary, unique situation. Um, that's one of the things. Anyways. You know, this, uh, yeah, it makes a lot of sense. It makes a lot of sense, F1. And, you know, there's a lot of callers in tonight sharing their incredible stories. What do you think about uh, some of what you've heard tonight about? I think it was Sophia about this flying saucer materializing in her room and a beam coming out of that. Does that sound too extraordinary or does that make a lot of sense? To you? Anything that sounds too extraordinary is probably right on the money um, <laughs> to tell you the truth. Um, you know, one of the things that she said, and I, you know, there's a lot of sensationalism and usually the truth is very plain. Um, like I heard from a yogi once, the answers are so simple. The simpler the material is and the answer is, it just fits as the truth. One of the things she said that was probably the most valuable thing she said, and I don't know if too many people, I think you caught it, but I, it, it's so perfect. When she said, their eyes don't move side to yeah, side. Yeah, the eyes. But the eyes they are blink. the same thing. Yeah. Well, you know what? They blink like a shutter. You know what I mean? A camera shutter. Yeah, that's what I like about the detail. The detail in regards to the eyes. That's what uh, Sophia really, you know, there's sometimes people have dreams and they see things. But to have that kind of detail on things and kind of have a relation with other people's experiences. That's what uh, makes a lot of sense in my opinion. F1, we got some uh, other callers, so you want to stand by real quick? Sure. Absolutely. Thank you. All right. Stand by, stand by. Let's, uh, let's see. Let's, these guys have been hanging on for a long time, so I want to bring them all in. Uh, 978, thanks for waiting. You're live third phase moon. You may be our last call. Go ahead. Wow! Uh, yeah, no, Blake. I'm just uh, listening, in, man. Just uh, hey, hearing no what's going on. Hey, thanks for uh, listening in. Thanks for listening in. All right, no problem. Let's uh, let's go to Los Angeles. I think Erica three one zero. You're live third phase of minute. Thanks for waiting. Hey, this is this is Chris again. It's my second time listening. Fascinating show. Once once again, I'm still fascinated by these accounts of um. UFOs, and in particular, the lady who mentioned that uh, she was visited by what, what she described as a two-seater, um, that was really fascinating. I'm new to the, um, you know, I'm, I'm new to the, the subject of um, UFOs. Um, for a long time, I kind of dismissed it as just, you know, something that maybe the government was putting forth so people can think that it's a um, UFO as opposed to some type of government uh, psyop, but now my thinking has kind of been changed a little bit over the last, you know, maybe a year or so. Wow, that's that's awesome because I want to ask you, basically, we've been doing this show just about uh, 53 minutes now, and I want to get your uh, opinion. Do you think there is – because there is no government role in this third phase moon. The, uh, this is all public. This is public information. What do you think so far now after just hearing what you've heard in the past uh, 53 minutes? Well, you know, their accounts are, are pretty compelling. Um, I mean, you hear these accounts, you know, over and over, um, and they, after a while you have to kind of believe that there, there, there are some um, legitimacy to these accounts. Um, like I said, I've always been of the opinion that, you know, oh, yeah, there's no UFOs. You know, these are just the government or some secretive agency putting these things out there so that we can – it can divert our attention towards what they're really doing in terms of something that's secrecy. I'm kind of rethinking that that notion. It might be a combination. Hey, thank you. Thank you. Thank you for calling in. A little background noise, but I appreciate, uh, you know, that's what it's all about, having an open mind and, you know, listening to the stories, evaluating the evidence, and making up your own mind because you're not going to have any power right now that's in any uh, situation ready to deliver it to you, such as our governments, they're not going to give it to us. So it's tricky. It's a tricky uh, thing trying to get down to the bottom of this. But I love 
UFO uh, videos. When people submit their UFO videos, that's that's uh, really the almost the holy grail, grail because it hold up in a court of law in a lot of sense. Okay, we got uh, we got some callers that's been holding on for a while. Maybe we could bring one more in. You there? Uh, a non uh, uh, unlisted number. Hey, third Hello. phase of moon. Yeah, you made it. You made it to third phase moon. How are you doing tonight? Okay, this is uh, Robbie, the author of uh, Written in Red Dreams, the novel. Um, I'm calling because I wanted to share some uh, information with you real quick. I know you got other callers waiting. Um, I've received information directly from Poland that uh, this murder that took place, uh, Max, I hope I'm saying his last name right, Spires, what I'm hearing directly from Poland is that this gentleman was murdered by a cult called the Ants Cult, uh, like the insect, the ants. Um, I've, did, um, I've done some research. There's not much I can find out. What I have been able to find out is that, yes, there is a cult called the Ants Cult. They're very big. Uh, they're entrenched through Eastern Europe. They have members that are high-ranking um, government officials all the way down to street junkies. I've been able to find out that um, they do make murder videos, and they do post these videos on the deep web in these private uh, red rooms. But that's all I've been able to find out. It's, it's, it seems to be a very secretive cult. So what I'm asking is any of your viewers, if they have any information on the Ants cult or any uh, relation of the Ants cult to the Max Spires murder that happened uh, a few weeks ago, if they could please post any information they have in your comments section because I, I'd like to get to the bottom of this and just find out if it's true or if it's not true because the information I'm getting from Poland, um, this is a very credible person. So I just wanted to share that with you. And please, any information, um, leave in the comments. All right. Uh, right thanks so much. That's a uh... Big news possibly could be what have been the cause of this weird, weird uh, death with this UFO investigator. And uh, we look forward to your book, that's for sure. Look forward to the book. And uh, we'll give our review once we uh, read it, that's for sure. I wanted to bring in uh, F1 one last time. F1, you know, this, uh, this was a good radio show tonight. We're going to be doing it again this Friday. So join us, all right? Because I want to get uh, – I like – when you join us, because sometimes you could bounce back with some of these uh, yeah, statements that really people cool share right here. Like that. That's what I think is really cool of how to report it. Uh, and, and one other question real quick for anyone out there is, if aliens live in a different universe and they have their own conditions to live in and we're terraforming, then how come... They come and they can walk on Earth and interact with people without consequence. There it is, people. That's a big question from F1. Leave your comments below and join us this Friday. We're going to be back at the same time, doing it again, taking your calls from around the world in regards to this uh, phenomenon happening right now. Uh, F1 had a big question, and we appreciate the big callers that had guts to share their UFO encounters to the world because it's not easy, people. It's not easy dealing with the ridicule, dealing with the coming forward because uh, people are going to say you're nuts. You're nuts and you're crazy. But no, you're not. You're not. And you're not alone because we the people, I know myself and a lot of people here joining us tonight believe you. Join us this Friday and stay tuned to YouTube Third Phase Moon for updates coming in. Coming in from around the world, Blake Cousins, have your cameras ready. Keep your eyes on the skies. We're not alone. of cases that it really it doesn't turn out to be that way it seems like sometimes that they're just basically nobody's looking up in the skies and it's a good thing some people are including yourself sir again when when again was this taken and uh let me ask you this was it i don't know if i heard you was it in the daytime or nighttime and where were you 
the nighttime. It it was the nighttime. It was around. Um, I mean, I don't even remember. It, it had to be after eleven, twelve, one o'clock at night in the or, you know in the morning. It had to be. And um, you don't think there were I military? Left you, I left you a me- I left you a message. What's that? I'm sorry. You don't think there were military choppers of any kind? What makes you say that it wasn't one of ours? I. Oh no! What, the thing that I saw. Yeah, yeah. Oh, I honestly c- couldn't tell you. I, I'm, um, to me, honestly, it was unidentified. But the way it took off and the way that it was just literally sitting there, plain, it literally looked like it was just sitting there. I'm gonna be honest with you. At first, when I was there's a, there's a children's hospital in Oakland, and it's all it's all anyone that knows the Bay Area. There's a Bart State in, on the freeway. Uh, it's 980, I believe. There's a BART, the BART station, which is like the train station, in the middle of the freeway. When you when you see the BART station to the right, there's a children's hospital. And f- behind the children's hospital is like a clear shot all the way down towards that town. It's a nice, perfect picture of the city. So at first I was like, oh, I thought it was the pointy building. And I thought, because usually like when the Giants or the Niners or the Warriors win or they're playing, the, the city changes the lights on top of their buildings from orange to blue, yellow, red or whatever. So at first I seen it and I didn't think nothing of it. But then I, like I said, the color of the lights were seriously different. They were really vivid, really bright. It wasn't like, it wasn't like, there was no like beam to it. It was just like a super bright light. So at first I really did think it was the pointy building. But then when I realized it wasn't, I could see, I, I like, I, when I pulled over downtown in the projects for Oakland, I, I, I looked up and I could see that it was, I, I want to say waving left to right left to right and then that's when I rec- realized uh, I was in the wrong area and uh, I seen the helicopters and then so I just kind of like try to proceed to find it or whatever but honestly it could have been I don't know I mean I- I'm not saying that I saw a green person you know what I mean I seen something it was weird and the way it took off I don't think we have anything I don't know that we have anything that takes off from a dead stop to a f- that quick and just disappear where I couldn't even find it at all anymore Wow, absolutely, absolutely sounds unexplainable to me. Sounds like, wow, if you can't explain it yourself, and you, you're a grown man, you know what you're seeing, and you've seen a lot of uh, air traffic over there. It's a big city, and you see something strange. It possibly is strange. Uh, thank you so much for calling in. Appreciate that. Now, there's so many callers in tonight, and it is our Monday night radio show. We don't do this very often, but... People want to share their story, so let's bring them in. Let's bring them in. Uh, we're bringing them in, and hopefully we could bring them all in tonight. 706, you're live, third phase of men. Welcome to the show. Hi. Hey, how's it going? It's going good. Um... Podcasting from Hawaii. We have a little rain coming down, but it should be okay. It should be okay tonight, and we are taking calls from around the world. The number to call in is 347 347- Nine three four zero three seven eight. Well, there are um, there's some things going down around the world in regards to information, trying to suppress it, and it is in regards to UFOs and about national security. But it's not just happening right here at Third Phase Moon. It's happening to a lot of people, including Julian Assange. Wow. Apparently, he's been reported missing. Uh, just this past Friday. Nobody's seen them. The Ecuadorian government has basically shut off the internet. They cut it off. And um, I guess the Ecuadorian government really wants to, uh, they're not too happy with Julia Assange's uh, WikiLeaks coming out. A lot of WikiLeaks. And the WikiLeaks uh, people, their, their statements, they're expressing some concern in regards for his safety or whereabouts. New fears have been uh, raised up about uh, Assange. Has he been killed? Well, this is uh, very concerning indeed, in my opinion. No, there's a lot of information coming in in WikiLeaks recently in regards to the UFO phenomenon. And uh, this is pretty devastating. I want to get people's opinions tonight, this special Monday night radio show. Do you think uh, the U.S. government and the Ecuadorian government have basically uh, 
said, hey, look, we don't like this stuff coming out right before the election because people are getting kind of riled up about this. Some people are saying that there might be an invasion, an alien invasion on Election Day, a possible false flag. Well, these are big statements. These are big statements. But, well, where is Julian Assange? This is a big question that hopefully we get to find out very soon. Uh, We hope he's okay. You know, he does, he, he's just doing what Third Phase of Moon does in its own way. It's just filtering out the information that it comes in. Thousands of people keep demanding to see Assange proof of life. Let's get the proof of life. Let's get the proof of life and see what's going down. They said that, uh, some people said that they heard that he was banned from using the internet. Well, yeah, that... That doesn't surprise me, but that's what WikiLeaks is all about. So we'll see if anything comes around via Julian Assange. But tonight, we're going to be taking calls from around the world in regards to the UFO phenomenon that hopefully they can cut it off because that's what we want to do. We want to get the word out. So the number to call in, again, is 347-934-0378. Let's bring in the callers right now. Air code 415, welcome to the show. You're live, third phase of me. What's up, Blake? How you doing, man? Hey, pretty good, pretty good. What do you think? Do you think uh, Julian is uh, safe? Do you think they're trying to cut man, off you know, the when information it comes to stuff coming like, in? When it comes to stuff like this, man, I honestly don't know. I can't call it. I just, you know, I got hope for the best. If he's all right, hopefully he's all right. We'll see, you know what I mean? But um, I'm the one that left you that message last night on your last video. Uh, I seen a couple. I seen something in San Francisco late night uh, over the downtown area. It was crazy. Um, uh, so I'm an Uber driver in San Francisco. I drive for Uber and Lyft, and I was taking someone to Oakland. On my way back into the city, I saw three. I mean, in a triangle form, you know, one on top, two on bottom, really bright lights, but. The whiteness or the the color of the white, the, the light was like, obviously it stood out for me to catch a glimpse and just trip off of it. It was just literally sitting there. So what I did was, not even paying attention, I busted a uh, right, got off of the first exit, wasn't paying attention, I was just trying to get to the light. Um, I jumped out of my car and realized I was in the projects in Oakland, so... I didn't really want to pull out my phone and start pointing it up around people. You know, it's, you don't do that if you don't want to get in trouble. So I jumped back in my car and uh, headed towards the bridge. And then I parked on the side before I got on the bridge. And I don't have a good phone. To, I tried taking a video. It doesn't look – it could be anything. It's really garbagey. It, it doesn't look good. Uh, I took a couple of pictures. Again, doesn't look good. But uh, it was just sitting there, midair. It was kind of moving from left to right slowly. It wasn't a Chinese lantern because it stayed in formation. The three dots, uh, there was about two or three helicopters. Uh, San Francisco, Oakland, there's two airports literally across the bay from each other. I mean, like we have, there's rules where you can't fly drones in that area. You, you, you there, There's a lot of airspace and a small amount of space, basically, if that makes any sense. So out of nowhere, I, I, I realized it was two or three. At first, I thought there was three, but then we're like, you know, pulled over and saw there was only two and they kept circling and circling the thing. And, uh, before you know it, it just zoomed off quick, boom, gone. Like it was gone. And they kept circling and circling for a good, I mean, I went back to work and I kept looking up and anytime I had a clear view, I kept looking, they were around for another hour. And, uh, after that, it was just pretty much over with. But then the funny thing was I, right away, I had left you a, I, on one of your last one of your videos, I said, "Hey Blake, I just seen something." Blah blah blah. Then two hours later, you put that one, uh, the one video of the Netherlands up, and in that video, someone in Sacramento seen damn near the same thing I seen um, the same night. Or I don't know if he recorded it the same night or not. That's what I was trying to ask you. But uh, the, the same night I emailed you on your thing on YouTube, two hours later, you put up the Netherlands video, and then there was a Sacramento, uh, someone seen something in Sacramento, and I was wondering if maybe those two were connected together or what. Wow. But, uh, it yeah, was, it you know, was, that's, it was a, that's a good question because uh, I think it was captured the same day. I'll reference that, the Netherlands video, if anybody could pull that up. 
our video last night and see if that were, was the case. Because this is what's interesting to me, though, is that you're in a big city. You're thinking that people are going to see this stuff, and there's going to be thousands of UFO videos on the Internet of this event. And it's surprising for you. Appreciate it. Thanks for calling in tonight. Can you, can you share your uh, – most outstanding experience in regards to this phenomenon. That's what the people really want to hear. So I appreciate it. Thank you. You're welcome. Um, uh, one summer I started dreaming every night that um, uh, I, a saucer was coming and um, I was uh, in an old neighborhood that I used to live in and um, it would uh, pick me up. You know, I mean, it would like take me up in the light and into the saucer and it was never a bad dream, and it wasn't a afraid dream, things like that. And uh, I started thinking about it for a long time, and I thought, my God, I think that I, this has actually been happening. And, and for some reason, I'm just remembering it like it's a dream. And um, uh, I deliberately tried to, like, go them and to just let me have one clear memory because um, most of the time I just black out. And and uh, just know that it's happened to me, but you know it it's it's too dreamlike even that way. And uh, I uh, spent about a, uh, three or four days just trying to meditate and try to make it understood. You know, put it in my brain to make put it across to him. Just one, you know, just give me one. You know, it's like I don't want to keep going through my life thinking I've lost my mind. And uh, sure enough. Um, one night in the middle of the night, I woke up and uh, I saw um, the weirdest thing I've ever seen in my life. I saw a saucer come halfway through my room. My room is on the end of the house. And um, I was stupefied. I mean, it was like it just sort of materialized through the house. And um, it wasn't that big. It, um, I call the size of it a two-seater if that makes any sense, being suddenly was in the room with me and um, trying to communicate with me. Um, I, I was so stupefied, I didn't get the message right away. And uh, pretty much they just said, okay, here you go. Now you got proof. And um, stayed a few more seconds with me and let me get a good look. And then he went back and it was gone. It it left the same way it came in, and it dematerialized back through the wall. And I jumped up, and I ran to my window, and I was looking out, and I saw it going up and then take off. I mean, 4,000 miles an hour, it, it, you know, boom, it was gone. And um, I, I, that, was, that happened to me about two years ago. And uh, since then, I keep having um, them show up. You know, in the middle of the night, it's usually around three, three thirty in the morning, and um, they're doing whatever it is they do. And I, but I don't get the clear. It's still like a dream-like state. The weirdest thing that ever happened to me. I mean, I, I, I sometimes think if I try hard enough again, I'd probably get them to show up again. Um, I can't photograph them. I don't know why it is. I need somebody to tell me what kind of camera to use because every time I use my camera, my phone camera, or I have a digital camera, I cannot get clear pictures of them. Um, it's, it's Sophia. How are you? Hey, doing good tonight. I'm, I'm, we're just kind of concerned about Julian Assange. He's been uh, basically declared missing. We haven't heard from him. He has basically no Internet access, and the people at WikiLeaks are a little concerned about his uh, – Safety, and there was a statement that they put out on recently on their web page, but it's really still not giving any confirmation of his safety or anything. It's kind of a uh, kind of weird. We want proof of life. Uh, that's my concern this Monday night. What do you think? Is do you think uh, he's I kind think, of riled up? I think he's gone feathers? under the. I, I think that he's worried about his own life, and I think he's gone under uh, trying to find a safe place to be. Um, he's not stupid. I wouldn't. I wouldn't put anything past him. And yeah, he's probably gone underground and is trying to find a good place to go. Um, when they cut off your internet access, that's pretty serious stuff. And if you're thinking straight, you, you know what's next. The government coming after you is next. 
So, yeah, I think he went under. And uh, well, to get him to shoot. talk about it, it's going to be a tough thing. Yeah, it's it's actually definitely. I'm sure what you just said is 100% accurate. I imagine he is uh, going underground right now because things are getting quite intense in the, with this election year and everything else coming up within what another 18 days now. It's going to be going down. It's going to go down real right. quick. And I think 14 days. It's happening fast. It's just right around the corner, and there's so many right. leaks coming up. And I got a feeling. There's going to be some more coming out, but wow, they're trying to shut down some information. I got a feeling some of it has to do with, uh, you know, our friends up there, the extraterrestrials. Um, yeah, I would agree with you. Um, I think the uh, mounting uh, sightings that are going on lately have a lot to do with what's going on uh, worldwide, actually, with governments and uh, power struggles and um i think that uh when they're talking about an event coming i think that's it's getting closer and closer and closer i mean rapidly closer like maybe even before christmas we'll have to wait and see absolutely and then some people say this false uh flag invasion they've been talking about that for years but wow uh um, right the day of the election now that makes a little sense to me, but okay, let's let's get into uh, some UFO sightings. That's why you called in tonight. You got something you want to share with us? Uh, well, yeah, I've I've had so many. I was thinking about it for a while, which ones I would like to talk about, and some of them are just um, so weird that it's really hard for me to even retell them to myself. Okay, hold um, on. Let's go with the weirdest. Okay. Expressing some concern in regards for his safety. Or whereabouts. New fears have been uh, raised up about uh, Assange. Has he been killed? Well, this is uh, very concerning indeed, in my opinion. Now, there's a lot of information coming in in WikiLeaks recently in regards to the UFO phenomenon. And uh, this is pretty devastating. I want to get people's opinions tonight, this special Monday night radio show. Do you think uh, the U.S. government and the Ecuadorian government have basically uh, said, hey, look, we don't like this stuff coming out right before the election because people are getting kind of riled up about this. Some people are saying that there might be an invasion, an alien invasion on election day, a possible false flag. Well, these are big statements. These are big statements, but well, where is Julian Assange? This is a big question that hopefully we get to find out very soon. Uh, we hope he's okay. You know, he does. He he's just doing what Third Phase of the Moon does in its own way. It's just filtering out the information that it comes in. Thousands of people keep demanding to see Assange proof of life. Let's get the proof of life. Let's get the proof of life and see what's going down. They said that uh, – some people said that they heard that he was banned from using the Internet. Well, yeah, that that doesn't surprise me, but that's what WikiLeaks is all about. So we'll see if anything comes around via Julian Assange. But tonight we're going to be taking calls from around the world in regards to the UFO phenomenon that hopefully they can cut it off because that's what we want to do. We want to get the word out. So. The number to call in, again, is 347-934-0378. Let's bring in the callers right now. Air code 415, welcome to the show. You're live, third phase of it. What's up, Blake? How you doing, man? Hey, pretty good, pretty good. What do you think? Do you think uh, Julian is uh, safe? Do you think they're trying to cut man, off you know, the when information it comes to stuff coming like, in? When it comes to stuff like this, man, I honestly don't know. I can't call it. I just, you know, I got hope for the best. If he's all right, hopefully he's all right. We'll see. You know what I mean? But um, I'm the one that left you that message last night on your last video. Uh, I seen a couple. I seen something in San Francisco late night uh, over the downtown area. It was crazy. Um, uh, so I'm an Uber driver in San Francisco. I drive for Uber and Lyft, and I was taking someone to Oakland. On my way back into the city, I saw three. I mean. In a triangle form, you know, one on top, two on bottom, 
really bright lights, but the whiteness or the the color of the white, the, the light was like, obviously it stood out for me to catch a glimpse and just trip off of it. It was just literally sitting there. So what I did was, not even paying attention, I busted it uh, right, got off of the first exit, wasn't paying attention, I was just trying to get to the light. Um, I jumped out my car and realized I was in the projects in Oakland, so I didn't really want to pull out my phone and start pointing it up around people. You know, it's, you don't do that if you don't want to get in trouble. So I jumped back in my car and uh, headed towards a bridge, and then I parked on the side before I got on the bridge, and I don't have a good phone. To, I tried taking a video. It doesn't look – it could be anything. It's really garbagey. It, it doesn't look good. Uh, I took a couple pictures. Again, doesn't look good. But uh, it was just sitting there, midair. It was kind of moving from left to right slowly. It wasn't a Chinese lantern because it stayed in formation. The three dots, uh, there was about two or three helicopters. Because uh, San Francisco, Oakland, there's two airports literally across the bay from each other. I mean, like we have, there's rules where you can't fly drones in that area. You, you, you there, There's a lot of airspace and a small amount of space, basically, if that makes any sense. So out of nowhere, I, I, I realized it was two or three. At first, I thought there was three, but then when I you know, pulled over and saw there was only two, and they kept circling and circling the thing. And uh, before you know it, it just zoomed off quick, boom, gone. Like, it was gone. And they kept circling and circling for a good – I mean, I, I went back to work, and I kept looking up, and any time I had a clear view, I kept looking. They were around for another hour. And uh, the, after that, it was just pretty much over with. But then – the funny thing was, I, I, right away, I had left you a, I, on one of your last one of your videos. I said, hey, Blake, I just seen something, blah, blah, blah. Then two hours later, you put that one, uh, the one video of the Netherlands up. And in that video, someone in Sacramento seen damn near the same thing I seen um, the same night. Or I don't know if he recorded it the same night or not. That's what I was trying to ask you. But uh, the, the same night I emailed you on your thing on YouTube, Two hours later, you put up the Netherlands video, and then there was a Sacramento, uh, someone seen something in Sacramento, and I was wondering if maybe those two were connected together or what. Wow. But, uh, it yeah, was, it you was, know, it that's, was a, that's a good question, because uh, I think it was captured the same day. I'll reference that, the Netherlands video, if anybody could pull that up, our video last night, and see if that were, was the case. Because this is what's interesting to me, though, is that you're in a big city, you're thinking that people are going to see this stuff and there's going to be thousands of UFO videos on the internet of this event. And it's surprising to me in a lot of cases that it really, it doesn't turn out to be that way. It seems like sometimes that they're just basically, nobody's looking up in the skies and it's a good thing. Some people are including yourself, sir. Again, when, when again, was this taken? And uh, let me ask you this. Was it, I don't know if I heard you. Was it in the daytime or nighttime? And where were you? The nighttime. It, it was the nighttime. It was around, um, I, mean, I don't even remember. It, it had to be after 11, 12, 1 o'clock at night in the, or, you know, in the morning. It had to be. And um, you don't think there were I military left you, I left you a me- I left you a message. What's that? I'm sorry. You don't think there were military? choppers of any kind what makes you say that it wasn't one of ours i oh no what the thing that i saw yeah yeah oh i honestly c- couldn't tell you I, i'm um to me honestly it was unidentified but the way it took off and the way that it was just literally sitting there playing it literally looked like it was just sitting there i'm gonna be honest with you at first when i was there's a, there's a children's hospital in oakland and it's all, it's all, anyone that knows the Bay Area, there's a BART station on the freeway. Uh, it's 980, I believe. There's a BART, the BART station, which is like the train station, in the middle of the freeway. When you when you see the BART station to the right, there's a children's hospital. And f- behind the children's hospital is like a clear shot all the way down towards that town. It's a nice, perfect picture of the city. So at first, I was like, oh, I thought it was the pointy building. And I thought, because usually like when the Giants or the Niners or – the Warriors win or they're playing, the, the city changes the lights on top of their buildings from orange to blue, yellow, red, or whatever. So at first I seen it and I didn't think nothing of it. But then, I, like I said, the color of the lights were seriously different. They were really vivid, really bright. There wasn't like 
it wasn't like there was no like beam to it. It was just like a super bright light. So at first I really did think it was the pointy building, but then when I realized it wasn't, I could see, I, I like, I, when I pulled over downtown in the projects of Oakland, I, I, I looked up and I could see that it was, I, I want to say waving left to right, left to right. And then that's when I rec- realized that I was in the wrong area and uh, I seen the helicopters. And then, so I just kind of like try to proceed to find it or whatever. But honestly, it could have been, I don't know. I mean, I'm not saying that I saw a green person, you know what I mean? I seen something, it was weird, and the way it took off, I don't think we have anything, I don't know that we have anything that takes off from a dead stop to a, that quick and just disappear where I couldn't even find it at all anymore. Wow, I, absolutely, absolutely sounds unexplainable to me. Sounds like, wow, if you can't explain it yourself, and you, you're a grown man, you know what you're saying, and You've seen a lot of uh, air traffic over there. It's a big city. And you see something strange. It possibly is strange. Uh, thank you so much for calling in. Appreciate that. Now, there's so many callers in tonight, and it is our Monday night radio show. We don't do this very often, but people want to share their story. So let's bring them in. Let's bring them in. Uh, we're bringing them in, and hopefully we could bring them all in tonight. 706, you're live. Third phase of men. Welcome to the show. Hi. Hey, how's it going? Doing good. Um, it's it's Sophia. How are you? Hey, doing good tonight. I, I'm, we're just kind of concerned about Julian Assange. He's been uh, basically declared missing. We haven't heard from him. He has basically no internet access, and the people at WikiLeaks are a little concerned about his uh, safety. And there was a statement that they put out on recently on their web page, but it's really still not giving any confirmation of his safety or anything. It's kind of a uh, kind of weird we want proof of life uh, that's my concern this monday night what do you think is do you think uh he's I kind think, of riled up i think he's gone letters? under the I, I think that he's worried about his own life and i think he's gone under uh trying to find a safe place to be and uh i started thinking about it for a long time and i thought my god i think that i this has actually been happening and and for some reason i'm just remembering it like it's a dream and um, uh, I deliberately tried to, like, go them into just let me have one clear memory because um, most of the time I just black out and and uh, just know that it's happened to me. But, you know, it, it's it's too dreamlike, even that way. And uh, I uh, spent about a, uh, three or four days just trying to meditate and try to make it understood, you know, put it in my brain to make put it across to them. Just one, you know, just give me one, you know. It's like I don't want to keep going through my life thinking I've lost my mind. And uh, sure enough, um, one night in the middle of the night, I woke up and uh, I saw um, the weirdest thing I've ever seen in my life. I saw a saucer come halfway through my room. My room is on the end of the house. And um, I was stupefied. I mean, it was like it just sort of materialized through the house and um it wasn't that big it, um i call the size of it a two seater if that makes any sense being suddenly was in the room with me and um trying to communicate with me um i i was so stupefied i didn't get the message right away and uh pretty much they just said okay here you go now you got proof and um stayed a few more seconds with me and let me get a good look. And then he went back and it was gone. It, it left the same way it came in and it dematerialized back through the wall. And I jumped up and I ran to my window and I was looking out and I saw it going up and then take off. I mean, 4,000 miles an hour, you know, boom, it was gone. And, um, I, I, that was, that happened to me about two years ago. And uh, since then, I keep having um, them show up, you know, in the middle of the night. It's usually around 3, 3.30 in the morning, and um, they're doing whatever it is they do. And I, But I don't get the clear. It's still like a dream-like state, the weirdest thing that ever happened to me. I mean, I, I, I sometimes think if I try hard enough again, I'd probably get them to show up again. Um, 
I can't photograph them. I don't know why it is. I need somebody to tell me what kind of camera to use because every time I use my camera, my phone camera, or I have a digital camera, I cannot get clear pictures of anything. It's like they, there's something weird about their presence that messes with my camera. That's the weirdest one. You know, that is incredibly uh, amazing because it sounds like you had a flying saucer, a two-seater, probably – I would say it sounds like to me maybe about 14 to 20 feet in diameter, a flying saucer materialized in your room, and an alien came out of it and communicated with you to show proof that they existed. Um, he's not stupid. I wouldn't, I wouldn't put anything past him, and, yeah, he's probably gone underground and is trying to find a good place to go. Um, when they cut off your internet access, that's pretty serious stuff. And if you're thinking straight, you, you know, what's next? The government coming after you is next. So, yeah, I think he went under. And uh, well, to get him to talk shoot. about it, it's going to be a tough thing. Yeah, it's it's actually definitely, I'm sure what you just said is 100% accurate. I, I imagine he is uh, going underground right now because things are getting quite intense in the, with this election year and everything else coming up within, what, another 18 days now? It's going to be going down. It's going to go down real right. quick. And I think 14 days, it's happening fast. It's just right around the corner. And there's so many right. leaks coming up. And I got a feeling there's going to be some more coming out. But, wow, they're trying to shut down some information i got a feeling some of it has to do with uh you know our friends up there the extraterrestrials um yeah i would agree with you um i think the uh mounting uh sightings that are going on lately have a lot to do with what's going on uh worldwide actually with governments and uh power struggles and um I think that uh, when they're talking about an event coming, I think that's it's getting closer and closer and closer. I mean, rapidly closer, like maybe even before Christmas. We'll have to wait and see. Absolutely. And then some people say this false uh, flag invasion. They've been talking about that for years. But, wow, uh, um, right the day of the election, now that makes a little sense to me. But... Okay, let's let's get into uh, some of your post audience. That's why you called in tonight. You got something you want to share with us? Uh, well, yeah, I've, I've had so many. I was thinking about it for a while, which ones I would like to talk about. And some of them are just um, so weird that it's really hard for me to even retell them to myself. Okay, hold um, on. Let's go with the weirdest, okay. the weirdest one. We like... Because nothing's weird here. Let me tell you, it's all relevant. People have experienced all this before, so you're, it's not you're not by yourself. So I want to hear the weirdest encounter, uh, extraterrestrial UFO encounter. And again, what was your name? Sophia. All right, Sophia. Appreciate it. Thanks for calling in tonight. Can you can you share your uh, most outstanding experience in regards to this phenomenon. That's what the people really want to hear. So I appreciate it. Thank you. You're welcome. Um, uh, one summer I started dreaming every night that um, uh, I, a saucer was coming and um, I was uh, in an old neighborhood that I used to live in and um, it would uh, pick me up. You know, I mean, it would like take me up in the light and into the saucer and it, it was never a bad dream, and it wasn't a afraid dream, things like that. 